The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Chicago. Ask someone to picture the city, and they will have trouble coming up with a concise description. When people think of New York City, they think of skyscrapers, subways, and muggers. When they think of Los Angeles, they think of sun, smog, and traffic. When they think of Detroit, they think of cars, factories, and decay. But for those of us that know, there's only one thing we think of when someone mentions Chicago. Vampires. And tonight, we tell their story. Good evening and welcome to McStabber Studios' Windy City After Dark. I am your storyteller, Shanky McStabber. And I am Relyn Dare. I am in Twitch chat as Mama McStabber. And I am playing Jacqueline Doron of Clan Ventru. Hi, I'm Mischievous Red and I'm playing Isabella Caputo of Clan Torador. Good evening. I am Ivy Raven and I play Genevieve Schutz of Clan Gangrel. Hello. I'm Urian and I'm playing Roscoe Akers, Clan Tremere. And we, we were with this coterie last time. We ended with their club being blown up. Just the front of it. Now, first of all, let me welcome everybody to the start of Season 9. And the events we're going to start with tonight are roughly a week after the events of the club. A week that has been spent doing damage control, arranging repairs, and otherwise trying to deal with the fallout of the previous season. Not to mention, Roscoe had to attend a trial, which was covered in our intermissions. If you didn't see the intermission, please, you should go watch it. I think it'll have bearing on the story here going forward. But as we open up tonight, the Coterie has gathered in Jackie's Haven. They've come back together after a week of lying low and everything else to discuss What's been going on? And I'm going to hand the scene over to the players as they've already gathered up so we can begin. Jackie's looking at her sat phone. Where the hell is Nicholas? I don't know. He's been missing since the uh, explosion. Yeah, I haven't heard from him either. Probably doing God knows what with those dead bodies. <laughs> Etienne? Yes, ma'am. Contact Matthew to find out if Nicholas is still with us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And he steps out of the out of the room to do as she asks. <sighs> well. <sighs> I'm sorry that we have not had much time to talk. Isabella, honor is secure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know how much that means to me. Yes. Um, I do have people that 
keep security at this place around the clock. I have an electronic system as well and other little party favors. I've beefed up security recently thanks to uh, the Amelia situation. Oh, good. But currently working on a cage in case something like this happens again. Oh, that's a good idea. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you, Jenny, for getting your contractors in for the club. Uh, oh, I just... I went with through uh, Melina again. She's her, excellent. Her crew did such great work. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? Throw some more money their way. I go through her as well. She's fantastic. I um, have made sure uh, the police have reported that it was a suicide where the guy decided to take out as many as he could with him. Um, insurance has covered quite a bit. So actually all of it. <laughs> and um, that night, the reason I wasn't there at the time you were, I was at Elysia. And I met the gentleman in black, the Viscount there. He, I didn't know I was going to meet him there. I went and spoke with Kevin. But as I was leaving, I saw him there and he asked me to dance with him. He said it was nothing personal, that it was just a job. And his job was not to take you, Isabella. His job was to take honor. Lane's a tracking device we found later. You got rid of it, yes? Of course. Excellent. Um, yes, so... I sent him to my associate, Mr. Shaw, in Milwaukee, because he's currently out of a job. His job was finished. And I want to keep him busy so he isn't rehired by the Sender Institute, which I'm sure is who blew up our building. Yes? Makes sense. Since he was actually hired to target Honor, that makes some of the information that was on the laptop we swiped make more sense. So, uh, there, the, 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 Jenny just pulls the laptop out from a bag and puts it on like a the table or whatever that's in the room. Uh, they were, they're doing Thin Blood Alchemy. They're not saying it's Thin Blood Alchemy, but everything from what I, you know, kind of thumbed through looks like that's what they're doing, which we kind of figured, but they're figuring out which of our, uh, bloodlines, clans, etc., are the best ones for the drugs that they want to make. So it looked like they were targeting uh, individuals who had the powers that are often, you know, called like fortitude or celerity, potence, and even protean, which makes sense if they're targeting honor and not. Yes. But uh, they also had something that they called uh, they called the furnace. I don't know. Uh, Bobby read through some of this stuff when he was opening, apparently, and he said that he thought it was a different research group. So. Uh, but apparently the one that that we're dealing with, the Cinder Institute, was looking for these specific traits. So the I I had uh, Tasha put everything on thumb drives. Uh, Genevieve, Genevieve puts out pulls out like a handful of thumb drives and puts them on the table next to the laptop so anybody's willing was more than welcome to look these over so i'll definitely have some of my people look it over as well they will say that the drive. this institute has a seems to have a decently powerful tremere working with them they left a mirror message before the explosion roscoe that is something that your clan can do That's a good question. It's not, not really part of what I'm familiar with, but I'm supposed to, I'm sure it could be done. Wait, Carl did it for you. That's how he sent you the first message you received from him. Oh, right, right, right. You're right. Huh. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, I wasn't able to find out anything about who runs the company or anything like that, but I did find a location in Milwaukee where they seem to be headquartered. Do you have a plan for what we intend to do with that information? <sighs> Possibly. Have you by chance heard anything from Keisha? Anyone? Surprisingly, no. I guess she doesn't miss her toys as much as we'd like or as we'd hope. If she happens to come around looking for honor, I say we make a delivery of her to the Cinder Institute. <laughs> I believe they wanted honor because Keisha's messing up their business in Indianapolis. Would that potentially further their research in ways that would be detrimental to us? I don't know enough about it is temporary. what they're doing. If they destroy her, it's not our hands that are dirty. And then we get them later. Bitch deserves it. If they do not destroy her, I mean, she is a Setite. She can probably convince a Tremere to do business instead. We have the fallback of the ring. And then we still go get them. And we get her too, just because she'll be pissed off. I imagine we could get some other resources or assistance taking down the Cinder Institute, given how much of a problem it's caused in the area. Absolutely. I believe I can put one word into a certain Justicar's, I mean, uh, Archon's ear. And we can get all the help we need to take it down. Might as well make it two birds, then. Absolutely. I will not be take going to that uh, meeting, so. <laughs> not that one. Fuck that beach. Oh. <sighs> I, I just yeah. Interacting with Bobby had reminded re reminded me of the uh, Archon hanging over my head. So. Yeah. No. Fuck that beach. Um. No, I'll give it to Dread. You mean the, the heroes of taking down Duncan McTavish, Scourge of the Camarilla. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just... I it, found out why. They haven't. Tyrus went to see the Seer in the Undercity. She informed him that Duncan McTavish was going to kill him, destroy him. That is why Tyrus has avoided him. After being shot. And he did not see him coming. It scared him. Dread is more than willing, and I'm sure Nitro as well, to help us with Duncan. I'm not certain Tyrus will.
I understand it's hubris on my part, but uh, that's fine. I would just like to have the for I understand the club being attacked, uh, the Indianapolis Institute, everything says we should be going straight after the Cinder Institute, but maybe we need to do some of our business as usual kind of things first. Absolutely. So. I actually agree. That's why I think the Cinder Institute can be just held off for now. It, they, we did a tit for tat. It's fine. Theirs was a little bit premature explosion, but you know, it's. I doubt that they are going to come for us again now that they cannot track honor. I mean, it was a building for a building. Right. Unless you blew up more that I don't know about. No, I did not. I only had that little bit. Um, well, I think it, 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 it's worth mentioning that we're not as protected as we were. Um, that blast did take out our wards. Um, after my distraction a little earlier in the week, um, I've been, had a chance to look and check them all out, and they have to be repaired and replaced in a number of places. So we, we can't really rely on being proof against people spying on us. Are you going to meet with Arden? Yes. Excellent. I guess about the only only one who can replace well, them. Well, he's the one that did them. Right. So, okay, excellent. And by the way, your period of being missing. What happened? Hmm. Well, I'm I'm sworn to secrecy of uh not really revealing any premier things, but I think it's it I can at least mention that there's going to be some changes in the city as a result of this. Uh let's say it's a trial. Um Abraham is not going to be the regent anymore. Unfortunately for us, Victor will be. Isn't that a demotion? Yes, it is. But apparently uh, it's his punishment for having uh, caused trouble in the city with the, uh, the kindred. <laughs> Wish it was worse. <laughs> oh, no, with an ego the size of his. Oh, that is detrimental. I mean, I suppose he is kind of inheriting a shit show right now. No yes, offense, he is. Oh. No, no, it's none taken. Oh. <sighs> so am I to presume your rights and privileges of the Chantry have been restored? Yes. At the moment, so, so long as I continue to be a good Tremere. Mm. Um, but, you know, in, in Abraham's case, you know, he he was sent off on uh, Chantry business, shall I say? Understood. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. But, um, I do enjoy the grace of this chantry at this point, unless I do something else that irritates them. What does that mean for our dear Portia? You know, that's a good question. Um, she, it was found out that she was having undue influence. So arrangements have been made. I, I don't know that she's going to have a, an apartment there anymore, I, but I don't know the exact outcome yet. Well, if you find anything out, do let us know. I don't plan on messing with her, but I'd like to know what's going on. So I know how to avoid her. <laughs> Someone like her always has backup pieces in play. Exactly. And for those to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, excellent. Well, I am glad that you are okay. Thank you. So am I. Who's... I presume your friend is not. Um, no. Understood, and I am very sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. Jackie, your cell phone rings. Not your sat phone, your cell phone. She looks at it. And you don't recognize the number? She answers, hello? Yes. Jacqueline, the voice you do recognize. 
The voice is Alexa Santos on the other end of the line. Oh, Alexa, what can I do for you? Would you be a dear and step over to your window, please? And open the curtains. Jackie does. And on a building across the way, you see her, highlighted by the moon. Now, be another deer and turn off one of the lights. Please. Jackie does. When you shut the light off, suddenly the line goes staticky. And from the shadows in your apart or in your penthouse, Alexa steps out. She turns the light back on. Thank you. Of course, what can I do for you? I have been sent here by Prince Jackson. I have been tasked with investigating certain events. Okay. Would you please explain to me what happened at your club last week? Someone walked in strapped with bombs and blew up. Mm. The prince and I do not feel this was suicide-like. Oh, I'm fairly certain it was. He expired. Yes, but we know that's not the truth of the matter. I am on the task now of investigating this, so please explain to me what you know. Now, getting a good look at Alexa, the last you saw her, she appeared despondent. Mm -hmm. She is not tonight. Mm. There's a hunger in her eyes you haven't seen before. Tell Prince Jackson it is involving a certain task he tasked us. I assume you mean the Ashfinders. Yes. I'm included in that. I have been checking things. So, how does this involve your club being bombed? Well, they ended up taking my coterie mate, Isabella. She appears to be here in one piece. Of course. I do not let that stand. And she actually goes and sets on one of the tables in the room, just plops mm -hmm. down on it. Elaborate. We went to go retrieve her from the place that she was hiding out in. Where? Indianapolis. Thank you. Continue, please. Needless to say, because of the damages incurred in that rescue attempt, a certain Tremere who seems to be doing something with the Ash Finders, got a bit pissed off. So am I to assume the explosion in Indianapolis was also related to this? Yes. Not my city, not my care. Exactly. Was delightfully public. Quite a spectacle of death, actually. Yes, well, it is a shame. If you say so. Now, what do you know of the Cinder Institute? They are headquartered in Milwaukee. That's handy. They are performing thin blood alchemy to create designer drugs. My purpose in this particular investigation at this time is to ensure this doesn't happen again. We don't need the attention of blowing up buildings in the city of Chicago. I agree. Feel free to blow up Indianapolis any night you wish. I don't care. Please don't bring it back here. <sighs> It wasn't my intention to. They had a tracker on someone else that we rescued. Milwaukee, you say? Yes. 
and Cinder Institute and a Tremere involved. Yes. Most enlightening. And I do thank you for some of this information. I trust you've managed to clean up anything that looks suspicious about the bombing? Of course. But... Well, I'm not new, Alexa. Why? Well, <laughs> assumed you did. But assumptions are a problem, it seems, sometimes. Sometimes. I will look into the Cinder Institute. I will relay anything I find about the Ashfinders to you. Thank you. I should have you some information. Later tonight, actually. That is my next stop. Excellent. I have someone to interrogate. Have fun with that. Oh. Jacqueline, my dear, I will. I'm sure of it. And she grins a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's with, feral. I'm with sure. a smile that never touches the eyes. Though her eyes are still burning with a passion you don't understand. Mm -hmm. While I'm here, I might as well let you know. For the, the time being, if you have any issues you need to bring to the sheriff, you will bring them to me. Oh? Uh, sheriff Damien is taking a hiatus at the moment. I am temporarily stepping in to handle some aspects. Is Damien all right? Honestly, it's, I don't know. Not my business. I'm doing what Prince Jackson has instructed me to do. Understood. He assures me it is temporary. God knows I don't want to be a sheriff. I prefer my job. I prefer to kill. I understand. There are some pleasures in it. Speaking of that, I have an interrogation to do. Yes. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Of course. Do I need to turn out the light for you to step across again? No. I can find my way. And she actually goes and she steps right out the window that you'd open. Mm -hmm. And then disappears as she starts to fall. Leaving you all back. Now I'm going to assume you close the window and close the oh, blinds yes. again. Oh, yes. Well, that's handled. She seemed different tonight. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a little interrogation. Fine, I'll do that to you. <laughs> yes, I have some insight on some of her techniques. She is very wicked, that one. I'd always wondered if we'd see, hear from her after uh, the Luke. Um, wasn't in the picture anymore. Because they seemed to be connected. I believe she was bound to him. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure once she realized exactly what he had done, she got over that missing him real quick. So, well, it should be interesting to see what she brings back. Etienne, have you heard from Matthew? He steps back in. Ma'am, not getting an answer on either one of them's phones. Go straight to voicemail. Phones are either shut off or out of service right now. You want me to send Peter by his place? Yes, but tell Peter to be discreet. Yes, ma'am. He steps out to send Peter to check on it. Well, shall we stay here, maybe watch a movie while we wait for Alexa to return, or do you have other business to handle? 
my schedule is wide open until uh, somebody puts someone in front of me that needs to die. So. Do you expect her to return with answers tonight? She said so. I'm just happy to be back in Chicago, so I'm I'm free for whatever <laughs> whatever's up. So you left Chicago? Let's just say I wasn't I, I left Chicago briefly for the duration of the proceedings. Mm. Where where I went, I have no I have well, I have a generalish idea. A direction and maybe a, a minimum distance, but um, I have no idea where we were. It's supposedly shrouded in complete secrecy. So why are you telling us about it? I'm not. <laughs> you didn't uh, hear a thing, did you? Not a thing, Roscoe, not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Tremere shit. <laughs> right. I'm surprised your little friend didn't find a way to follow you out there. You know, that sort of that's you know there was there was something on the building that as we went in to travel through the uh the, the mirror portal um something i hadn't seen a, i think they call it a gargoyle that was sitting on the building watching we uh, disappeared after really? we were done yeah wonder if that's calls Most likely it is. They never really took off that much here in America, but in Europe they were. Mm. What's the weirdest, Jackie? Instincts? Yes, go ahead. Please. Just Jackie, because she's the one who looked out the window. Going to willpower? Three so far. Ooh. Wow. Seven. With Seven a crit. With a crit. And he mentions gargoyle. He didn't think anything of it at the time. But there was an odd outline on one of the buildings outside when you were looking at Alexa. Almost like a statue that you didn't remember being there. Outside near your haven. And I believe it has been sent to watch you, Roscoe, because there's one it, right across the street. Hmm. Not, not terribly surprised. I, I was told that I would be watched for good behavior. Yes, well, hopefully all coterie business is good behavior. Yes. Because I hear those, those things are very hard to take down. <laughs> well, let's hope there's never any reason to have to. Yes. Well... Let's go into the living room and put on a movie. So you all watch a movie for a bit. Mm -hmm. Give me one second here. I'm pulling something up. Okay. It's... Watch. What movie are you watching? There's... I got to ask that question. Any movie in particular? Fisherman's... No, that was different. That was Roscoe's <laughs> movie. No, we are not watching hentai. Um... I don't know. Pick me a movie, y'all. Fast and Furious. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> this is one of Peter's. He seems to really enjoy it, and she puts it in. <laughs> <laughs> and as you watch the movie for a while, when it gets done, and Jackie, you get a text from the same number. I'm sure you added it to your contacts oh, yeah. at this point from Alexa. Could you please open the window again? Certainly. And she says, well, looks like she's back already. And she opens the window and turns off the light. And you turn off the light. Out of the shadows, once again, steps Alexa. And she turns the light back. She is obviously not cleaned up after her interrogation session. Mm. Um, she is spattered with blood 
dried blood, but spattered. She doesn't even seem to have wiped her face any from it. Of course not. Thank you. Of course. That was... The least I can be is courteous. Insightful. Was it? Yes. The Tremere's name is Dr. James Mortuus. Hmm. Tremere and a researcher. All right. And what you do with that will be your discussion. Excellent. As for what else I found, found another lab. Really? Yep. Here in, in, that, Chicago. in that location? No, here in Chicago. Oh. I am going to pay them a visit later. Unless you would prefer to handle it. Well, I'm fresh out of C4. Wouldn't surprise me if Emilio has something, to be honest with you. I don't plan to use that. <sighs> I mean, if you wish for us to take care of it, we will. Well, it's up to you. Whether you wish to have fun or not with it, I will be more than happy to clean it. Nah. If you want to enjoy yourself, then go for it. I will, then. I will let you know if I find anything that I think would help you on your portion. Appreciate it. My portion is limited to the city itself, unfortunately. Of course. You enjoy yourself while you do it. Make them suffer. I will. <laughs> Good to hear <laughs> Where did that statue go that was out front? Oh, I believe that one belongs to, uh, someone. That one? Mm-hmm. One what? To Gargoyle. I did not think there were any of those left. I didn't think so either, but you know. <sighs> I'm sure the prince will love to hear about this. Well, I'm sure he'll take it up with the new regent. You've heard of that as well. Of course. I should have known. Mr. Akers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Did he tell you the rest of it? The rest of what? Just a car, just a car Carfax has informed the prince that Abraham du Sable is now Ash. Oh, my. Perhaps he shouldn't consort with Tori do Neonates. Hmm. Perhaps he shouldn't have sat in his office like a little twat for so long, either. That, too. Agreed. The prince was far from heartbroken, I am sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have done my part in my investigation tonight. I'm going to go and have some relaxation in a building. Enjoy yourself, Aunt Alexa. And she once again steps out the window mm -hmm. and just starts falling before disappearing. Jackie closes the window. And yes, the statue is gone. Yeah. You never got They're a not... clear enough look to know its full shape. No. It was very good at hiding in the shadows. Mm -hmm. hmm. Gone, but not forgotten. Turn it back over to you, players. Well, at least now we have a name. And not a location. And Hopefully a location. She can get something out of it. Mm hmm. I will, um, ask my contacts in that city to look into that discreetly. unfortunately I'm not familiar with him at all. And
Hmm. Is there any chance that I could use the, the Venture Clan Merit? Oh, absolutely. Anyone in the Coterie can. Yes. And a Tremere asking. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. quite particular with that one. Dr. James Mortuus. He was rumored to have an obsession with thin bloods. Rumored to have a very odd view on blood sorcery. Very, even for Tremere standards, lack of ethics. Your understanding was he was expelled from the pyramid for improper experimentation on fellow kindred. Supposedly he is dead. Officially, he is dead. Now, you've not heard whether he had a a blood hunt on him or anything. But you do know he has been disavowed by Clan Shamir, at least officially. Virtuous. Um, he was kicked out and disavowed for, uh, well, improper experimentation on Kindred. Jackie looks at Isabella and says, you don't say. Took the words out of my mouth. It's glad it wasn't more. And he had some strange ideas about blood sorcery and a, an unnatural interest in uh, in blood alchemy. That tracks. Apparently. That tracks. Yeah. All right. I'll find out whatever dirt I can on this person. Find out if he goes anywhere outside of the Center Institute. Because honestly, if there are more places such as the furnace, he may move up the priority list. Furnace, that's where the cinders come from, right? Yes, Oscar. Or the ashes. Everybody, everybody give Roscoe a round of applause. He he made an attempt tonight. <laughs> but... Well, perhaps you should tell the regent that he is not as ashed as he thought that they... That would be was. an interesting uh, little piece of information to offer the, 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 the glorious regent. Mm-hmm. He would show you're being a good Tremere. Exactly. Yeah. Very you're loyal. being very loyal. <laughs> and that, that is important. Yes. I must, I must be loyal. Yes. I have to keep remembering that. Yes, I must be loyal. <laughs> what Maybe does it they it say? Loyalty hand. has its <laughs> perks? <laughs> well, I mean, Vic Victor is a card-carrying Tremere, so. Yeah. I wish okay. I could say I'd go with you as a buffer, mm. but you know, he, <laughs> he pisses me off. So. <laughs> I don't think he wants any Toreadors near high ranking Tremere right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I am just a low, lowly gangrel who would threaten to tear his dick off. So well, that is his most prized possession, I'm sure. Probably. All three yeah. inches of it. <laughs> Three inches is generous. <laughs> I'm a generous woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you all settle in to, to watch more movies for the night? Perhaps. Or do you have. You gotta watch the second one. Okay, we can watch the second one. Mm, the whole franchise. Oh, <laughs> there's only so many hours in the night. I mean, I know it's winter <laughs> now, but you know. Still, <laughs> uh, if we're, I was gonna. I was gonna say, if we're gonna spend the entire night watching this stuff, I will just go buy a car and drive around fast in that instead of <laughs> watching this dribble. So <laughs> that would at least be more entertaining to me. I actually have one in the garage. Peter mm. comes back in. Man, I went to his place. The doors locked. Lights are all off. Cars are both there. Nothing. Feet on the door. No answer. 
Snuck around the place, no answer, nothing. Nobody's watching the place, didn't see anybody staking it out. Gone. Car's engines, both of them were cold. Hadn't been driven. All right, let's go for a ride, y'all. Jenny, what abilities did you say they were looking for again? Uh, I think it was the stuff we typically associate with uh, fortitude, celerity, potence, and uh, protean. So, I don't know if uh, Nicholas is necessarily good at any of those, but... He has fortitude. Ah. Let's go for a ride. Let's go. So, as you all set up to go for a ride, I think right here, it's going to be a good place for a break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're having a break early. You know, we had a bunch of episodes where the break was real late in, the, in this episode. This time, it's going to be early. Get ready for a long second half, everybody. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Please enjoy. Allow me to introduce myself, though I fear you've heard my name. That you've heard the story of Countess Bathory. History is told by the victors, heroic warriors, and mad kings. Will you hear my story from the lips of Bathory? They call me.
Splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow within. Splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow Splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow I've always been the hunter, nothing on my tape. But there was something in you I knew could make that change. To capture a predator who can't remain the prey, you have to become an equal in every way. So look in the mirror and tell me, who do you see? Is it still you? Or is it me? Become the beast, we don't have to hide. Do I terrify you? terrify you or do you feel alive splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow within splinters of my soul cut through your Cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow within. Splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow
eyes that terrify you Oh, do you feel alive? Welcome back. Before the break, the Coterie got together to discuss the past week. Had a visit from Alexa. Found out some interesting information about Damien, who's currently on hiatus for some reason. But the big one was they can't seem to find or get hold of Nicholas. And Jackie has said that they're going to go check out his place. So as we open up in the scene, you're in the car riding over to Nicholas's place. Let y'all have any discussion you need on the way. I want to come out here because I got a little gift from Lamar that might let me see his sister. If she's around. Hmm. I'm glad you specified because when you said a little gift from Lamar, I was about to say C4 is not going to help you see his sister. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I guess she uh, actually turns on oblivion sight as we're getting closer. Okay. And that's a new, you I mean not brand new to you, but you haven't had it that long. Mm -mm. You're still shocked at just the random places you see spirits. And I say random because they don't seem to wander the streets a lot, but you do see them once in a while peeking out of windows, peeking out of buildings. Mm -hmm. Very odd. But do you all have anything else to discuss or is you a pretty quiet ride over there? Pretty quiet ride. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so has any weird stuff been happening around Isabella yet? No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. If, she, if there was, she would have talked about it, but it's fine. No, it very oddly, no. But as you head out there, you go up into the medical district. As always, the medical district is unsavory to hang out in. At night, it is... Obviously full of junkies in the unhoused and generally not a good place to hang out. But when you pull up to his mortuary service, it's just like Peter said, lights are out, vehicles are there. Completely quiet. Jackie steps out of the car. What's awareness, though? Please, everybody give me what's awareness. You know I have to make you roll. Um, can Isabella, and if this, if this replaces the wits awareness, that's fine. Um, but can Isabella use vicissitude to, uh, get some, like, armor in place, just in case? I mean, you can if you want. You could have done it on the ride over there. Okay, I'll do that then, too. But you said wits awareness, too. Yep, you can still do your wits awareness, but make sure you do your roll for your, uh, vicissitude. Make sure you, you pass your, uh -huh. your rouse check and all. I got six Instinct with a crit. supply. <clears throat> Uh, instinct, sure. Six with a crit. Roscoe, six with a crit. Wow. What the on earth? You have to re-roll. You have to manually roll the dice. It's not going to let you use the willpower roll on it, looks like. Or no, you don't have the, uh, the stat. Wits? Awareness. There you go. It, I had it clicked and it unclicked. I don't know what happened. Okay, you got four. Not bad. I'm willpowering. Five. Five, okay. As you pull it up and checking the place, six and a six, and Jackie has uh, her sight on. It's, for you, Roscoe, it's eerily calm outside here. Uh, with six and a crit, it doesn't seem, right where his building is, doesn't have nearly as many drugged out people. Doesn't have as many people sleeping in boxes. Very odd for you, Jackie. As you're walking around the building, uh, you see, catch a bare glimpse of somebody peeking out the window of Nicholas's place at you. Isabella was staring at you. Izzy. We're here looking for Nick. You see her come back to the window. 
And she walks to the door. It's locked. Okay. Um, There's a small problem. Uh, we go around back, and Jackie's going to kick in the fucking door. I was gonna. I was gonna suggest something a little less. Whatever, but that's fine. Go for that. As you go walk around the back, when you get by the back door, suddenly the window by the back door explodes outward. Oh, that works too. You remember she's um. Her particular powers involve throwing things around the room. Mm-hmm. Seems, one of the kitchen pots got chucked through the window. I grabbed the kitchen pot. Toss it back in and go in the window. And everyone following? As you follow in, Jackie, only you can see Izzy. Mm -hmm. She's standing there. And you can't hear her, unfortunately, because that doesn't give you the ability. But she is obviously panicked, wringing her hands, pointing all kinds of directions. Can't tell what she's trying to convey. And then she... And she points in a drawer. Okay, and I open the drawer. And in the drawer is a pen and paper. Okay, I take out the pen and paper. Okay, and when you put it on the table, she picks up the hand and you can see her concentrate, or picks up the pencil, or the pen, and you see her concentrating. And it's unsteady, but the pen actually begins to move. And you can all see her writing on this paper. Nicholas gone. Went to see Isabella, came back, not here. Necklace gone too, can't find it. Jackie takes the pencil and says, where is Matthew? He wasn't here either. Storm outside, bad, can't go out, trapped here now. No sign of either one. Roscoe, do you have what you need to track Nicholas? Yes, always. Yeah, I I can do that. Please do so. Okay. Okay. So first you're going to have to make your ritual roll, correct? That's right. And that is going to be intelligence blood sorcery. And the difficulty is, of course, the le- uh, level of the dis- of the uh, ritual plus one, which makes your difficulty three on intelligence blood sorcery. Six. That's enough to get it. So it gives you a margin now of three. So now you have to do your second roll, which is intelligence plus survival. And you get your tracking uh, specialization. And your difficulty is six minus your margin. So your difficulty is, again, three. Let's see if he, as he pulls this ribbon out, dips it with blood and concentrates, and then tries to light the ribbon on fire. And we shall see what he gets. Hang, hang on a sec. Let's see. Let's click. Okay. And we'll see what happens. Can he get it to work? Five is enough with a crit, which means you'll get to see two nights worth of uh, the the path will stay visible for the next night as well. But when you do it, you concentrate the ribbon burn. So you know the the ritual went off, but there is no line tracing him in this building at all in the past 24 hours. He has not been here for at least 24 hours. Okay. Can I uh, go outside through the door this time just to look around to see? You can unlock the door from the inside. Yes. Okay. And you peek out, hmm. and there's nothing out there. He's he's not been here or anywhere near here, at least that I can see in the last 24 hours. Then we shall drive around a bit, I suppose. She writes on the notepad. Well, actually, she can speak. She forget. She forgot. Um, Izzy, we are going to find him. She writes back, 
Please hurry. Of course. Stay inside, stay safe. Um. She also writes on it, his phone is here and his keys. So someone had to snatch him from here. Are you going to look around the place? Yes. Because I'm also looking for something to seal up the window so that if by chance that's a barrier that spirits or things could get through. I'm sure there's still some, I mean, he was building, he got this recently refurbished and everything. I'm sure there's some spare lumber in a, in a okay. basement area for you to board up the window. But as you're looking around the place, uh, you find obviously where he prefers to sleep. Mm -hmm. The morbid little shit likes to lay in a coffin with skulls around the room. Some of the skulls you recognize. But the coffin lid is thrown over on the floor. And there's no sign of a struggle in that room. But given Roscoe and uh, Jackie Six with a crit, the crit's important. I give you, you know, bonus points for crits because crits are great. You do find a drop of blood in one of the rooms. That looks a couple days old, maybe. Roscoe, could you touch and see what happened here? Okay, I can try, sure. Mm, and spirits she's, touch. And she's going to take what lumber and shit she can find back to the window and say, I'm not very really skilled at this. Jenny, can you assist? Yeah, sure. I mean, thank you. Uh, can do. Thank you. So you all want, are nailing that up while yeah. he nailing spirits up touches. the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you needed a crit to find a single drop of blood in the room. Hmm. That was good. So go ahead, Roscoe. Roll your intelligent aspects. Don't forget you you need to rouse for your first ritual and this one. Okay. Let's see. Well, at least you didn't get hungry. And rouse the other one. But no, yeah, that was. Oh no, level two ritual. Yeah. No, nope. that first one you rolled two dice, so that counted. That was your rouse check. So I don't know why you rolled the second one. Oh, you you un, you also wanted me to rouse for the previous one. Yeah, but why did you roll two dice for the first one? I just hit the rouse check. Oh, okay. Oh, and it had plus one selected. Okay, I get you. So you did get hungry. Cool. Okay. You go ahead and uh, roll your intelligence all specs. And your beast actually is speaking while you're doing this. This isn't serving your clan. This isn't serving your house anymore. Why are you doing this? You should be being a dutiful student. <laughs> and working in the library of the Chantry. This is going to get you killed. Wow, eight with a crit. Jesus. Yeah, that ain't going to get him killed. <laughs> <laughs> As you touch the blood. What information are you searching? What happened here with it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you look back, eight's more than enough to get you what you need. You can see Matthew. Here in this room. He's alone. And then suddenly his head rocks like something hit him. She can't see anything that hits him. Faint blur, something from based on your successes with the crit. Something hit him that is not in this world. Hmm. Something struck him from beyond the veil or the shroud. And you see him actually go down. The blood spot was caused by blood leaking where he was hit. And once he went down, you can see the door open as four figures step in the room. Mm. The door opened from the inside. Still can't see anyone opening the door. Even with your successes, you can't see clearly the individuals who did it something okay. weird about them that you don't understand um since you said the, the blood drops is from from where he was hit is there any trace anything that i can tell from what what he was hit with all you can tell is it wasn't on this side of the shroud okay 
You've well, never heard of good. a spirit that, well, there's rumors. I mean, if you've watched a ghost show, you know, sometimes people say they feel like they got hit by a ghost. Somebody got walloped if that was the case this time. Now, the ones coming in, I'll give you on your successes. They're not kindred. But there's something off about them that makes them hard to see to you for some reason. Uh, because Scry the Soul is built off of emotion, your best guess would be. And they're emotionally dead. Hmm. So they don't leave very much of an imprint at all. And all you can tell from there on is he lays in the floor for a while. Then he's drug out the front door. Along with Nicholas. Hmm. Okay, this, um, th this isn't good. Um, from what I'm seeing, looks like he, um, Matthew's hit, hit in the head and knocked down from something that's uh, on the other side of the shroud. And he, he laid there for a while um, before he and Nicholas were drug out the door. It looks like there were four um, entities of some sort. I couldn't get a, a picture of them. But uh, there were four here that, uh, that, that took them away. And how long ago exactly was that? Mm, you'd estimate four days. Yeah, it's, it's been like four days. All right, well, we're in the medical district. Let's drive by a certain building. Okay. Thank you, Jenny, for your assistance with the window. Oh, of course. I was going to say, I I'm feel like I'm kind of useless in these situations. So you all hop back in the vehicle to drive around. Mm. And as you go past the building, uh, the building... Construction's been moving right along on it. Mm -hmm. It's not done yet, but it's got over half the floors that it used to have rebuilt. Roscoe, do you see a trail at all? No trail. I'm looking, of course, four but, days. You couldn't yeah, see that see far anything, back. But it has been four days. Uh, Jackie, with your oblivion sight, though, mm -hmm. there are six spirits patrolling that have silver cords behind them. Mm-hmm walking inside the perimeter of the fence. And the rest of you can count it at least 10 guards. And dogs. Do we think he's inside? I mean, seems like a good bet, but I don't think we can uh, storm the uh, rebuilt castle. We so. can't storm the castle, but we need to see inside. Hmm. Uh, can I, uh, you try using clairvoyance to, uh... Yeah. Nothing except your club has ever really blocked you from doing it. So go ahead. Right. Do your rouse check, and then we'll push your senses out of your body. Which is going to take intelligence all specs. And you got the hunger three. Damn, Roscoe, um, you're getting hungry tonight, aren't you? Your beast. He's our tracker extraordinaire. The beast speaks again. <laughs> so, is this how you've fallen? You've become the bloodhound. Who are you going to be bloodhound for? Your friends or Victor's lapdog? <laughs> six successes. That gives you six questions, don't it? Go ahead. What do you get? Okay. Do, uh, can I ascertain if Nicholas is in here? You push. It's going to take more than one point to do that because you're going to have to, okay. to search the building. I'll take three of your questions for that one. Sure. Okay. You push your sight out and everyone sees Roscoe's eyes going focused. 
as he's sitting there, and you sweep across it. Oddly enough, none of these spirits seem to see you because you haven't physically left anything. And as you push through the buildings, you find the first three floors are fully furnished and fully ready to be occupied, though nobody seems to have set up in there yet. There's none of the telltales that it's being used yet. But when you head down towards the basement area, because that is the place you knew, you find several doors you have to go through. Don't seem to impede you at all. You come to a series of laboratories, rooms that have chairs that are not occupied, but they look like chairs they strap people to, various machines hooked up in there, a lot of medical equipment. And you find one whole room that you would swear is out of a sci-fi movie. There are almost look like life support pods, creches made for human bodies. There's 10 of them in the room. None of them are currently occupied, but they've obviously used for that because they've got all the, the life support equipment nearby to monitor everything. It's just all turned off. But you don't find any Nicholas at all in the building. Hmm. He doesn't seem to be here. Matthew, ne neither. I'll spend my other three looking for Matthew. Nope, I'll give you as part of it. You swept the building. You didn't see Matthew. Either of them. Now, Jackie, yeah. I'll have you. I'll. You know that the cords do not stretch to the basement of the building this time. They go somewhere underground, but not towards the building. They go a different direction underground. And you can't tell where it would lead to because, you know, they're going to go direct line of sight back, and if it's underground, you're just going to see the tip of the cord dipping underground and be gone. But it's not the basement of this building. You know that for sure. Their cords, their tethers are not going to this building. Where does it look like they're going to? She points. Yeah, and it's not far before it drips around, but you couldn't tell it could be any building within the medical area that had a large enough basement. But you know he's not there. Any other questions you have? Um, can I can I follow the cords to find out what where which building they're going to? Mm -hmm. You run to the limit of your successes trying to follow the cords through the earth, which is very difficult, by the way, even though you're not in your body. And before you are forced back to your body, you don't come to the end of it. But you do get three blocks away before that happens hmm. to the east. Okay. Um, I couldn't see all the way, but it looks like the cords are stretching about three blocks to the east. All right. Well, you're looking a little bit peckish, so we will resume after you've fed and had some rest. Okay. At this point, Etienne looks over, man, we might want to pull off. The guards have noticed our car parked out here. Yeah, fuck them. Let's go. And he pulls off. Where are we going now? Back to the Haven? Yes. And you all start heading back. And on the way back, Isabella, uh, you do notice briefly. I mean, you got five successes. I'm going to give you something. You do notice briefly. Something is following you all in the sky. Can't make it out clearly. Seems very good at using the shadows of buildings and the blocking of the buildings themselves to, to keep from being seen. Something is following you. It's large, bulky, but it's following. I think the gargoyle's following us, though I'm not sure any of us are surprised. Jackie turns on oblivion sight and looks. You see clearly behind you, no ghosts, but because it's oblivion sight, you also see no shadows. For the first time, you get a clear look at this thing. It is bulky, vaguely man-shaped. It is a textbook definition of a building gargoyle, complete with a large set of wings on its back. Hmm. 
you'd put it based on the length of it when it stands up fully erect, 12 feet tall, heavily muscled. It is about 12 feet tall, heavily muscled, has wings on its back. It looks like a classical European gargoyle from a building. Hmm. Does that ring a bell, Roscoe? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay, well, always under surveillance. Mm Mm-hmm. When we get back, you may wish to go tell Victor tonight, because you just found out. Probably a good idea. You're right. Do you wish to have any discussions on your way, or we just want to skip ahead? It's up to you all. I'll give you all a discussion if you wish in the car. No, nothing oh. to really talk about with what went on, or? Okay. No, you arrive back at the Haven. And return to your vehicles. Now, I know you all have different things you want to go do. Uh, we'll come back. We're going to go and follow Isabella as she leaves first. We'll do it that way. Isabella, where do you go after you leave? I go back to my brewery. And when you lie, arrive at the brewery, Emilio, you find him in the basement. And behind a, a heavy steel vault door that's been put in down there. And he is currently welding, of all things the top of a cell cage into anchors. Looks like you've been working hard while I've gone. Of course I have. And takes his welding helmet off, comes over. Okay, you're okay, right? Every time you leave now, I get paranoid something's happened to you. We need to talk about that. Okay, hang on a second. And he looks over at the other guys that were there. Y'all just finished the welding. Get this done tonight, and then y'all can call it tonight. Thanks for working late. What, your office? Mm-hmm. And he follows you up to the office. And as you're walking, he's, he's giving you a briefing of the night. We didn't catch anything on the security cameras. No odd things popped up. Pretty quiet night overall. Good rake of the till tonight. Good money, but nothing weird tonight. Didn't even have to catch any pickpockets i'll consider that a small victory yeah, like well, everything else yeah problem is that when we when i don't get to catch the pickpockets that means i make less money that night because i keep whatever i find on the pickpockets before i eject them out of the building do you need more money when, yeah it's the it's the principle of the matter you know come on i gotta keep my skills up and why would i give it back to him i mean that's fair but he- no point in arguing with you. Yeah. I you know, gotta keep handy. And when you arrive in the office, he, he doesn't sit down. He just stands there. Uh, is this one of those we need to have a talk moments? It, it is, yes. Mm, should I be sitting? That's up to you. Nothing bad will happen. But the pause you put with that, I think I'll sit down. And he plops down on the uh, on the stair on the seat. You've been worried about me, which I understand. But you need to take care of you. You running into these situations, blowing up buildings, all of it. Look, the- you need to be careful. The burn I got when those electrical lights exploded, it's already healed. It's good. This time? Not the first time I've gotten hurt. Come on, you act like it's the first time this is, you know. It's happening more and more frequently. How can I put this? It's because you're living in this shithole. I mean, that's fair. But I have to live here for a bit. And I don't think I can change your mind about protecting me. Nope. So what if we were to potentially make you even more durable, even stronger? Mm. 
Oh no, I'm going to make you say it. Did you want me to embrace you? You know, here's the thing. I've been a ghoul longer than you've been alive. You have. And it was offered to me. Vivian offered it to me more than once. Have I thought about it? Sure. Is it something I want to have happen right now? No. There are additional complications that come if I cease to be human. Can't protect you during the day. Can't watch over you while you sleep. I will be as powerless as you are while you sleep. That is a problem. The activities that tend to get you in the most trouble though are the ones that happen at night. You could easily find someone else to watch over during the day. I understand I'm bound. And if you tell me that's what you want, I will be unable to argue with you. But at the same time, I am bound, so how can I tell what my own feelings are on the matter? It is a fact. I have never chafed under the bond. You have been very light-handed and exercising, said Bond. But I have no way to know what my feelings are. My feelings. While I'm under it. It's a fact of the matter. I mean, have your feelings changed when the Bond shifted from Vivian to me? Yes, I serve you now, not her. But I mean your feelings on this issue. At the time, I wasn't thinking of being a kindred. I was enjoying spending... When Vivian was prince, my life got dull. The fun of being a ghoul or a prince is negligible. I have to be aware of certain things. I have to act certain ways. I can't get into certain activities because it reflected on her. I looked at becoming your goal as a way to enjoy my life again. I wasn't ready to be a kindred at that point because I'm going to get to experience something new. And in all our time together, it has been exciting every time. Sure, sometimes you scare the hell out of me, sometimes... I get hurt trying to protect you, but it's exciting. But it, I'm bound. I don't know my own feelings on this. A young ghoul probably doesn't even realize the magnitude of the bond, but I do. I'd like to think you know that I wouldn't exercise the bond. Hardly at all. If I did, we wouldn't be having this conversation because I would tell you not to risk your life. You haven't been one who uses the bond against me. But it still... It still alters everything I think every time I think of you. That is partially why I put myself in danger. Can't not put myself in danger. If you are in danger... I will protect you. To do otherwise, I can't think, even picture doing otherwise. And that is the bond. That is the essence of the blood oath, as it was called, called in the old days. So let's say I lessened the bond portion of our relationship. 
If you allow it to expire, oh. I will be able to give you my own opinion on the matter. How do I know you won't risk your life even more? This is the only thing I have to potentially save you. And I haven't had to use it yet. You won't. You'll have to trust me. Difficult thing, isn't it? Don't make me regret it. I'm sure there will be days you regret it. But... I mean, you're a pain in the ass either way. Let's be honest, Emilio. You know this. Oh, that is the point of that. I am sure you will regret it some days. But it is the only way to honestly know my opinion. Otherwise, I know that I'm influenced by it. Do you remember what it was like to be bound to Vivian? Someone mentioned her name, and your first thought was what was best for her. That is what it is to be a ghoul. I also now know that I experienced the bond more strongly than some others might. Yeah. So it's hard to tell how much of that you would experience as well. Well, you've seen my reaction to the Amelia issue. You saw what I did when you were taken. If you wish to know my opinion on Embrace, you must let it fall. It will take months to, to go away, of course. I know that much. But I can tell you one thing. Even if you let it slip, I'll still be here with you. I won't go anywhere. I have no doubts of that. You and I are the only family we have left for each other. Yeah, that's true. Plus, who, who would bust my chops and keep me uh, out of trouble if I wasn't around with you? Do the best I can, but you always seem to find it yourself. I'd end up running a crime syndicate somewhere if you weren't around. And he don't grins. pretend you're doing already. I don't run a crime syndicate. I am the syndicate. I don't run it. Potato, potato. Talk to me about it. In time. May not even have to wait too many months. As it slips, I'll start to have more and more of my own opinions. Like I said, don't make me regret it. Don't do anything... Don't get yourself killed. Okay, I, I thought you were going to say for a second there, don't do anything you wouldn't do, but... Probably not a good thing to say to me. No, it's not. So, they still got honor parked for you? They do. Good. We'll get the cell done if they want to transfer her over, but... You told me they staked her, so I'm pretty sure that'll keep her... Pretty much uh, immobile for a while. We shouldn't need it, but who's to say with as many issues that keep cropping up? Yeah, well... And Not a bad thing to have. I mean, let's be fair. It's a very Toreador thing to have a dungeon in your basement. Let's just be honest. We can think of it as a drunk tank if we really need it. But it could work for that, too. We could also put in the drug dealers that we don't agree with in here. There's a lot of fun that can be had with one of these. Maybe one night we'll lure Nicholas down here. See if he's uh, able to pull an escape act. I'll leave Grim Reaper plushies for him. How about that? <laughs> Knowing him will have his sister help him. Okay, that still creeps me out. You me too. weren't there when she blew up all the lights in the place and electricity started shooting down. and That was pretty wild. I saw her just write with a pen tonight and... Well, I assume it was her. I didn't actually see who it was, but 
Wait, you mean like the pin floating and... and... Yeah. That's some weird shit. Game with the heebie-jeebies. See, I've seen a lot of weird shit. I haven't seen that yet. See? Excitement. I need to Excitement, see that. yes. Not death. <laughs> Not Ooh. permanent death. She can do that with a pin. I wonder if you could convince her to help me play pin the tail on a drunk one night here. I thought we didn't want that type of ghost activity here. I thought we both creeped us both out. It creeps us out. But look, if there's a whole market for the ghost hunters these days. And if your place gets a reputation as haunted, I guarantee we'll get a business increase. We could just say it's haunted. Now that only works short term. You got to give them something. You don't think we could make something up? Like, hello, we are beings of the night with some sort of enhanced abilities. I think we can figure something out. Yeah, we could, but it just works better when it's authentic. They, 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 they flock to it better. Get one of those paranormal groups start doing an investigation. Maybe we'll get them to do it on TV. Oh, we could get those, one of those ghost bro groups to come in here. Let's put a pin on that. Why don't you get back to working on the cell? See? And what? don't get yourself killed. This is why you keep me around. And this is why I'm going to stick around. And he actually gets up out of seat and he comes around the desk and he bends down and actually gives you a hug. She like, she like acts hesitant, but she like reluctantly gives him one too. I just... I'd have a lot less problems with putting myself in danger if you stayed safe. Don't you think I try? Half the time? It's unavoidable in my situation. And it's which means it's probably unavoidable in yours, which is why I want to do as much as I can to help it. That's exactly it. It's unavoidable that I have to protect you. Exactly. Don't forget that. And he, when he says that, he actually stands up and just walks from the room without looking back as he heads back downstairs. And now we're going to flash to Roscoe. Where's Roscoe heading after he leaves Jackie's Haven? Oh, he uh, thinks, well, you know, I need, I really need to hold up my end of being the, uh, the good Tremere. So I will go over to see over to the Chantry and try to go in to see the new regent. As you arrive at the Chantry, you notice as you pull up tonight, there's a lot more guards than there was when Abraham was running it. Mortal security, obviously, but most likely bound. As though Tremere cannot bind a Kindred, they have no problem binding humans. And as you come into the place, you know that Victor's current where he meets with people, is not in Abraham's old office, but through the mirror. He conducts no business outside that mirror. Mm -hmm. When you once again put your hand on the pen and well up your blood, give me a rouse check for that, because it is a rouse check when you have to well the blood up for it. Hunger 4, going to meet with Victor. This should be interesting, everybody. You are rather hungry. And you, as you're stepping into the portal, your beast speaks. Just kill him. Tremere has always rewarded strength. That is what makes it strong. Kill him and take the regency. Not yet. Maybe later. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. And in no time... As you go through the portal, it is always it's upsetting, weird to step through it. You're disoriented for a second. Because one minute, you're in the Chicago Chantry. The other, you're in a high vaulted room that now has a table set up in the middle of it with a desk, file cabinets. He has literally set up an office right in the center of this room. And Victor is behind his desk. Mr. Akers. Good evening, Lord Regent Victor. Thank you. I'm 
trying to be respectful, sir. Hmm. Cute. Yes, I am regent now. Please, come before me and... You wish to meet with me, obviously, so you are here. And you notice there is no chair for you to sit down in. Well, I'm I'm here just to to hold up my end at being a a good tremere as required. Of course, you are enjoying this, aren't you? Not particularly. Well, you are enjoying my current circumstance of being demoted. Don't lie to me. Nothing mm. wrong. With I will that. I will admit there there is a certain um, small amount of satisfaction, but I'm not taking a great deal of pleasure in it. It doesn't serve. I must eat humble pie to serve Clan Tremere. Then I will. Even if it tastes like shit. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Akers? I wish to uh, report up some information that I found out tonight. Um, one of our clan members who was in... This was... And I'm losing it. This is, this is in Milwaukee, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you've okay. been told. It's the Cinder Institute's based at in Milwaukee. Okay. The, the, uh, we're, we're, part of our, our current task is to, to find the, uh, those who are making ash. And, uh, one of our leads has uh, been to the Cinder Institute in Milwaukee. As it, it turns out, we finally have figured out who's running it. It's a Tremere who uh, I had thought long since had uh, passed on, who had, who had definitely been uh, disinvited to the clan. Um, and who would that be? Turns out to be uh, Dr. James Mortius. He is dead. Well, apparently not. My understanding is that after being ejected from Clan Tremere, he ran afoul of some neonates who, shall we say, enthusiastically decided to remove him from uh, remove the stain from our clan's history. And you say he's alive. Well, yes. Undead. Undead, right. And he's running this Cinder Institute. What do you know about the Cinder Institute? They are um, really trying to uh, do investigation into the, the types of blood, kindred blood, that would be most suited for making their drug, ash. Um, they're looking at collecting blood from various kindred and using thin blood alchemy on it. Hmm. Let me make a roll real quick. See how much he's willing to share with you. That would make sense. He had odd views. He seemed to think he could somehow take kindred vitae and use it to give our abilities to others, to kind. Now, <laughs> our goals, obviously, get some ability. But his idea was always that it should not be limited as it is. There should be a way to give them more power temporarily to infuse them with our power to give us bodyguards who could walk in the daylight not equal to us, but close. Well, it seems to be coming to some fruition, but with drawbacks. 
Oh, well, his sounds... experiments failed, is my understanding. They all went insane. Mm. They they've refined, they've been able to refine it somewhat through the through the thin blood alchemy. Um, it's not quite the uh, level that you were you're speaking of, but some can kind of uh, they've they've actually experienced the memories of the the kindred that have been used in making the ash. Um, but the serious drawback is that it also seems to there's a uh, a very vengeful spirit that follows whoever takes it and occasionally materializes and uh, destroys them. That, that is actually interesting. I will thank you for that information. I will research it, see what I can find. If he is doing this still, his experiments, you must understand, his subjects not only went insane from hearing voices, destructive voices. My theory is that his method was transferring power, but with it came our curse, what we call our beast. And the human mind is not ready for that. Most of them killed themselves in orgies of destruction. Not to mention extracting the blood like he would do it took a toll on the kindred involved. Yes, it did. Thank you. I will look into it and let you know if I find anything. I have been tasked to assist you on this by Prince Jackson as my capacity as a warlock. He calls it a way to appease my past transgressions. I will work with you and assist in any way I can. And you can tell as he's saying it, it's killing him to be civil this way. Well, I, we will all appreciate your assistance. If it helps us remove that monster, he still lives. These are not the knights. I have him running around. Oh, agreed. And things are too unstable. We don't wish him to run afoul of the Second Inquisition. If we still had a Chantry in Milwaukee, that would be handy. But we don't. We have very few assets left in that city. But I will see what I have available to help to check. Thank you, Mr. Anchors. I'm glad to serve. For House Tremere. Yes. And I serve as well. You may go now. Thank you. Good evening. And as you turn to leave, he, you actually hear him getting up to head to a side chamber. Obviously, that particular side chamber contains histories of some kind. You've seen, you could see the books, but you have not had a chance to see if it's the same library as there was upstairs. And you head out of the, uh, your chantry. Now we're going to flash over to Jackie as you're leaving. Jackie, after everyone left your haven, where did you go? It's about closing time at Joe's. She's going to swing by Joe's to see how things are going. Okay. And as you move through 
Ever since the attack, business has been down in general in this area. Mm -hmm. But you know that's just a temporary thing. It always is. People forget rather quickly. Oh, yeah. When you head to Joe's, it's light. He still has his band playing. And as you're walking in there, in the back corner, of course, Kathy's there tonight watching the jazz musicians. You've seen these jazz musicians here a few times. She almost is always here when they're playing. Excellent. As Jackie walks in and sees her, if she looks at Jackie, she'll wave to her. And she waves. And then Joe sees you. Mr. Rond, how you doing? Good, Joe. How are you? Doing pretty good tonight. Yeah. The yeah, universe is smiling on me. Good. Glad to hear it. Yep. Uh, business is down a bit after those events at your club, but yeah, it's picking back up already. Good. There's only a day or two. Yeah. Once words come around, it was just one misguided person. Yeah. It wasn't a, a pattern. He's, people seem to be coming back in here. Yep. Yeah, and repairs are already underway, so... Good. Shouldn't take too long before we reopen again. That's good. That, I mean, the talk around here is, you know, the rumor mill. One misguided person shouldn't stop the fun. Exactly. So. And certainly shouldn't stop the money. Certainly not. <laughs> well, Joe, let me go ahead and get a whiskey neat. Sure thing. On the house. Thank you. I mean, charging you would be charging yourself, so it's okay. <laughs> and he comes over and gets your whiskey neat and hands it to you. Thank you. And I go to the table to sit with Kathy. And when you sit down, as soon as you sit down, Kathy smiles. Jackie. Kathy. How are you? I'm doing fine. Spand is really good. Yes, they are. Really good. They were one of my recommendations to Joe when I took ownership of the place. They are the sax players. Particularly. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tasty. Oh, really? <laughs> Girls got to eat. Yes, a girl does have to eat. Yeah. You, you don't want to eat from Nero these days. Oh? No, he's... Ever since... A week and a half ago, he's just been weird. I'd say he has dementia, but our kind don't get dementia. No. He's just weird. He loses his train of thought, gets distracted. Hmm. Starts saying one thing, forgets what he's saying, switches subjects. Is it happening frequently? No, just off and on for about a week and a half. Hmm. I mean, he's done it once or twice in the past. Usually he does it for a couple of weeks and then he goes back to normal. Well, as normal as he can be. The last I saw him, which granted it was a couple of weeks ago, he seemed, well, different but fine. Um... Hmm. No. At least when he's like this, he's not talking about, you know, the the city singing violence in his ears. Yeah, he shouldn't be talking about that much more. Yeah. So it gets on those weird moments. So why is Damien taking a hiatus? Well, that was direct now, wasn't it? It was, but I'm dying to know. You figured I would tell you because we're in baby chorus together, or...? Oh, please, I know what your job is, darling. He is being punished, currently. For? You don't hear this from me. Of course not. But the rumor mill says he went down south side into Anok territory. Stirred up one hell of a hornet's nest. Really? Yeah. He went, kicked in the door of the pit. Ooh. Tossed Mal Davis around. Tossed Genghis around. Kicked in Anita's door. If you believe the rumors, 
threaten to lash her to a boat, set it on fire as dawn rose. Oh, shit. <laughs> Kathy. He was looking for someone, though I can't get anyone to tell me who he's looking for. Ordinarily, I don't think Jackson would care about uh, fucking with the Anarchs. But that's a little bit too... That was a bit heavy-handed. Overt. Yes. Wonder what on earth got into him. Don't know. I haven't spoken to him. No, he's been grounded. Yeah. <laughs> None of the hounds have spoken to him. Oh, no. I don't know where he is. Oh, I've been told. No. But for now, Alexa is taking over his duties yes. temporarily, That's though his other hounds have not been removed. His hounds are just reporting to her for now. Yes. Um, I found out because I because Alexa stopped by and paid me a visit this evening. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Um, She's cheerfully bloody this week, isn't she? Yes, absolutely. Hey, I might have given her a bone to chew on. <laughs> She's been acting that way. About a month now. Yeah. She had like a... I don't even know how to describe it, a, a personality switch where now she's downright giddy, psychopathically insane, I guess you could say. Mm. Yes, well. But, I'm sure she had her period of mourning. Well. I still say we're not out much. We the art are. was shit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've read the pieces. His his shit was getting panned. Oh yes. Of course, my uh, informants told me some friends of yours might have had some. I say in that one. Yes. Well, he chose to send some of his employees with some religious fundamentalists to my charity event to try to picket it. Yeah, that's the rumor I heard. Was that? Mm -hmm. Isabella may have had a few yes. hands in some art critics panning of his shit. Of course, of course. Because, you know, if he wants to try to play games, I will show them how they're played. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, I, we're not out much with that. But exactly. I always thought his hold over her was odd anyway. Oh, he was ambitious. Yeah, but he seemed to keep her in check most nights now. She's unleashed, yeah, you might say. Kevin smart help bond her. And Kevin doesn't seem to be one of those who likes to bond everybody. But he needs to get over that shit. That's coming from you, that sounds pretty old school. <laughs> in cases like her? If you're going to keep that around, it needs a leash. I might I'd be onto something there, but <laughs> I, it's not my job to, to to run the city. No, it's not. Not mine either. Mine? I just like to talk about what's going on. I know. So, suicide at your place, huh? Yeah. Really? Wildest thing. I was just pulling up when it happened. You know, the rumors... Uh, the court is all of talk of that's bullshit. <laughs> Nobody knows what actually happened. Needless to say, somebody thought they could pick a fight. So anytime I see some... Anything else explodes, I should... Attribute it to retaliations. Got it. There won't be any explosions in this city by my hand. Hope not. No, because now I have his name. That's good. <laughs> the way you said that tells me you're not going to tell me, but... No. That's all right. I pick up enough <laughs> without that. I know you do. And just by your answers tonight, you confirmed it wasn't... Uh, Suic the suicide is not 100% the truth. Well, it was, but it wasn't. I believe someone forced him into it. Mm. That's an old trick. Mm-hmm. 
That's one that distasteful, really, to waste, but it works. Yes, it's quite disgusting, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oldies but goodies, they work. Brutally effective. Yeah, until the Second Inquisition notices stuff gets blowed up, and then we have some problems, and that's a different discussion, really. Yeah. It's just not, a, I, I look at it as not a good time if Alexa is taking care of Damien's duties. And for all Damien's faults, he was clear-headed. Willing to look at it from a political perspective, whatever he did. Alexa's not. Oh, I understand. We had a lovely conversation and I informed her of what she needed to know. Is she wearing those tacky-ass earrings still? I didn't even pay attention. She keeps showing up in Elysia with those fang earrings. Don't know whose they are. Nobody's ever gotten that answer, but she took them from somebody. Yeah. I don't know how long Damien's going to be grounded. I don't even know where he put him. I'd imagine. From what I've heard, Cratius is a bit upset about that situation. Hmm. Upset that he went and lost his cool or upset that he's now punished? Or upset his child or is being, or his child is being disciplined. Oh, interesting. For doing... What is in their nature? Well, what the tower should be doing anyway, which is mm, rooting out the Anarchs. Now, Kathy, look at you giving me valuable insight. It's no secret. Cratius is very old school in his oh, beliefs. Yes. yes. He is. My dad say he's old enough to predate that whole faction. <laughs> he does believe in the tower in many ways and. You listen to him tell it. The Anarch should have been squashed from the beginning. One house, one empire. You might think he's a fucking Roman by the way he acts. But I understand he's a little older than that. Just a little bit. Yeah. <sighs> so it's there's some friction. On the Primogen Council this week. I imagine so. My goodness, I may have to talk with Cedric. Oh, that old... That old monster, he's... I know he's somewhere chortling and laughing about the whole situation. He oh, always does. He, he laughs about everything. I'm overdue for a chess lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. So you won't win. Oh, no. I pump him for information. Well, I'm sure he's Nosferatu. Yes. <laughs> and a chatty Nosferatu at yes, that. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, I dare say... I mean, if we ever need more harpies... He'd be an excellent one. <laughs> I think we could be a trendsetter in Chicago and have a Nosferatu harpy. Could you imagine <laughs> what people would say at that? <laughs> we have an information broker as the harpy. Yes. <laughs> that might actually get... Good old Winneka to come out of the, the tent city to understand why an Osferatu is giving away information. I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, he doesn't necessarily give it away. We always exchange. But. I've noticed he gives a lot away. He does. He does. I asked him about it. Mm -hmm. He said that the secret is not what you give away. Mm -hmm. It's what you don't. Right. Okay. And I'm very good at reading between lines. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he has some choice comments for the, the council this week, then. I am certain it should be interesting. Because if you believe what I've been told, even Annabelle seems a little bit upset at the Damien situation. Those two never agree. Really? Yeah. Now, that is interesting. Mm, there's several theories. Some are, well, if he can lock up Cretius' child, whose child is next. Other theories are, 
and the disrespect to a primogen's child, whatever. The other ones are even more outlandish. They're working together. Or she has friends in the Anarchs that he pissed off. She's still working with Mount Davis, working with Baron Anita. It, they get more and more outlandish the further you go into that rabbit hole. You know, rumors. Which ones are true is the hard part. I hear them all. Then I have to pick them. Hmm. Fascinating. Somebody says it's even a power play on her part. She's agreed to take Cretia's side for that concessions. is far more believable. That's my personal belief. <laughs> She's going to back him in this and return for a concession in on another... In return for him to do so later for her. Yes, or mm -hmm. something specific that she's already worked out. Yes. That's what I bet I would bet money on. Look, I don't like the bitch, but she's good at playing that game. She's very good at the political game. She sat on that damn seat longer than I thought she should. Mm-hmm. She is very good at what she does. Gone through more princes than I can imagine. Yeah. And she's still standing. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> but let's let's get off the, yes, the politics. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. So and just what, enjoy some jazz. Yes. Me. And tell me, what have you done fun lately? Other than him? Yeah. And she points at the, the saxophone player. Sadly, he's not my type. No. The drummer uh, is, though. Maybe after the show, I'll have you introduced to him. <laughs> Gregory will be... Fine introducing you to band members. <laughs> Especially if I ask. And she smiles and she leans forward. I've got to keep myself busy now that Lamar's skipped town. Yes. And the two of you have your night together. Mm -hmm. Catch up a bit because you've tried to be friends with her, but you've been busy here lately. Yeah. Two of you have a good night together. Now we have to flash over to Jenny. Jenny, where do you go after you leave Jackie's Haven? Uh, since uh, Jenny had the uh, USBs of information, she had felt it would maybe be nice to Erzule and Adzi to give them one of the USB sticks so that since they were going to try and give me information as well, possibly. So she was going to head towards the House of Lilith. So. Okay. And... As you get to the house of Lilith and you pull up, it's a pretty busy night. But the oddest thing happens to you as you're coming, going up to the door, a man steps out, flanked by two rather large and obvious bodyguards. African American man, stocky, middle aged, dark, real dark skin. Hair's pulled as tight to his his uh, head, dressed in an immaculate suit. And he looks at you and walks past and then stops and turns back and looks at you again. Boys, wait here a second. Uh, sorry to bother you, ma'am. Would you happen to be Miss Genevieve Schutz? I would be. Who would you be? My name is not important in this particular subject. Well, no offense, but I had plans, and if you are going to be so rude as to not introduce yourself to a lady such as I, then you can call I me will Benjamin. Be on my way. That'll be fine. Do what? You can call me Benjamin. Benjamin? Yes. Okay, Benjamin. I'm only interrupting you because I've heard through associates of mine that you may have an interest in one Duncan McTavish. Yes. Uh, you know what? It is, you, you say it's going to be quick, but I don't necessarily want to have a conversation on the, uh, the street here. Tell you what, let's go. Let's go back to my car. We will, we can sit down. We don't have to have uh, prying eyes or ears, so. Perfect. And as you're walking with him, you notice 
as he's moving, he's got an economy of movement. Doesn't seem to waste movements at all. And when he's, if he stops, when you wait to open a door, he's perfectly still. You've seen this before. This is a trait that older vampires tend to get after enough centuries where they miss the little human movements that people make nervous fidgeting and all of that. He is in complete control of himself. When you open a door, he looks at his two boys. I'll be fine. Wait here. And he gets right in the vehicle with you. So, uh, thank you for the change of scenery. Like I said, it's always good to have conduct business a little bit more privately. I understand. We always have to be aware of our surroundings as we speak. As I was saying, I've heard you have an interest in Mr. McTavish. I indeed do. He's, uh... There are, there are multiple individuals who uh, want his head, in a sense, and it's kind of a game to see who gets it, so... He has been a problem for me lately. And I'm wondering if we can work an arrangement. What is it worth to you if I arrange for him to be in a certain place? at a certain time that you're aware of. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> see, I would, uh, I would love that, but I'm also getting sick of people who are looking to use me. I'm not looking to use you. I am thinking we can be mutually beneficial. I can eliminate him. Mm -hmm. But like everything, there are political considerations. And it's more advantageous for me if someone else does my dirty work on this one. And my understanding through unnamed individuals is it would be to your benefit were I not to eliminate him for you. Were I to let you get the kill. And you suddenly yeah. realize he has not been blinking even as he's having this discussion with you. Well, you are uh, fairly well informed, it seems. So, uh, I guess... So are you trying to say that my killing him helps you so I don't owe you? Is this, mm. is this? Well, I'm sure. You can do a small favor for me in the future if I need one. Because of the two of us, I can find many people that can keep my hands clean. But in this particular case, if you do it, you come out ahead of the game. I remove a nuisance without having to use someone that is better suited for other things. And all you have to do is pay me a small favor. It won't be big, minor. Usually, for stuff like this, the most I ever ask for is temporary property transfer. You are a businesswoman. I have done my research on you. Normally, when I make deals, my business is transferred to you, and then it is transferred to another company, and then another company, to hide the trails of ownership. I'm sure you understand that one. I'm sure you've done it many times as well. Oh, of course. It's uh, the best way to keep your... Well, you know, you do the shell inside the shell inside the shell, so... And in this particular case, your shells are not connected to mine at all normally. It will fool people for quite a while. <laughs> I don't have any business in particular, but it is funny how when you do business in this city, this comes up. You need this kind of an asset. And in return for that small favor at a future date, I will arrange... 
at a time and place you will know ahead of time for him to be there. You will still have to destroy him. That will not be what I'm part of, but I'm sure someone with your resources can accomplish that. Oh, 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 yo, oh, for sure, for sure. No, no, I was expecting to help do the heavy lifting. So it's, uh, it's going to be a pleasure to do so. Lift the threat of blood hunt off of my head and, you know, I can move on with my own life. I did not so, have that full, that part of the information. I dare say that you definitely should take me up on my offer. <laughs> you don't have to. There's oh, no, no. Choice. No, 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 no. See, see, I actually, this seems, this seems very beneficial to both of us. And I understand what you're talking about, you know, business person to business person. So the shell companies and things, that's, that is standard operating procedure. I completely understand what you're going, going for here. I think we can do something along these lines. He reaches into his suit and pulls out a business card and the business card is pitch black. It actually doesn't feel like it's made of paper. It actually feels like he's handed you a slate business card that has Benjamin and a number etched into it. Hmm. Here's my card. Do you wish for me to contact you at your hotel? Or would you have another place I should contact you when I have arranged things for you? Uh, I have a number at the hotel where messages can be left. So that would be perfect. Perfect. Can you give him that number? Uh, yeah. Uh, she's got like a business card. She pulls out of a, you know, like she's got like a holder in the car. She puts a, put, pulls out a pin, puts the phone number for that line on it, but gives him the card. So I do. Thank you. I think this will work out quite well. I do. Uh, I think this, yeah, I agree. This will be great. So. Now you have a good evening, Miss Schultz. Uh, you as well, Benjamin. And he opens the door and steps out. And the moment he steps out, his two bodyguards immediately flank him. And they start heading down the street. Uh, she actually pulls out the sat phone. And she's going to send a text to the group that just says, uh, wait, sorry, short real fast. Was it, isn't he, isn't, who's Amelia Sire? We know who Amelia Sire, isn't Amelia Sire Maxwell? The no, her prince? sire was uh, Peterson. Peterson, oh, okay. The previous prince. Okay. But Jackie has mentioned Maxwell because she yeah. has theorized that likely it would be a former prince of the city mm -hmm. and that would leave Maxwell because we know Loden isn't doing it. But you have okay. no way to attach him to L Maxwell unless you can give his description to somebody right. who may yeah. know Maxwell. Okay, uh, so Jane's just going to send a text to the group that just says, uh, I was approached by a uh, black gentleman, very old, not age, I mean like old for us. And who, Jackie replies, uh, got it. Who... Offer he want he's offering me Duncan McTavish's head in exchange for me playing the building swap game that Amelia described to us. What name did he give you? Benjamin. On it. Oh, and she also she just kind of ends with uh, he gave me a business card that feels like actual slate. What's the number? Uh, she'll put the number into the text. Okay. Okay. And Jackie uh, sends a text by cell to Dread. We need to meet. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm. A, I've got other business tonight, but I will. This was. I kind of. I. I would just. I'll talk about this with you guys later. And uh, she's like Genevieve out. <laughs> and as Jenny goes in to give. Adzi and Zule, the thumb drive. I'm sure Jenny's wondering what he was doing meeting with Adzi or with uh, Urzule. It's not the normal, well, he's male. He's not the normal clientele for the House of Lilith. We're going to end the season premiere of episode nine, or episode nine, the season premiere of season nine of Windy City After Dark right here, everybody. I'd like to thank my players and the viewers 
Welcome to Season 9. This episode's had a bunch of shit going down. Let's see how this leads this season. Of course, please join us on the Discord. Discord's where we cast the show. On the Discord, where you can see the players talk about who they're voting for to get the extra XP. And we do weekly Zoom hangouts. And it's a good place to be. I mean, we got a good community over there. We try to support each other and talk about games in general, not just vampire but all the games of course you want to catch your back cop i can't talk i haven't done this in so long you want to catch our back episodes pop over to our youtube that's where all the back episodes are and you can get all the windy cities the vampire or the werewolf the changeling the mage all that good shit of course if you want to see some amazing content creators it's over in chat but right here mischievous red over there ivy raven look at it this time i actually pointed at you directly it didn't take me five minutes crazy you can go pop over to them they stream on their own channels from time to time and do their own thing which is kind of cool they might talk about games they talk about whatever uh they don't exclusively talk about this stream they talk about whatever the fuck they want to because guess what it's their channel that's their right gotta love it if you want to uh get some windy city merch pop in get you some windy city merch we don't really make much money off it actually we don't make really any money off it it's just a way if you want to it's just cool merch. You have some cool stuff. I love these <laughs> posters. I love having these posters. We've got them hanging as you walk into the studio. Every time we go to record, I walk past the Windy City posters. Mm -hmm. So if you want to support the players, bits and donations, they go to the players. It's a way for you, the viewers, to show your appreciation, to give them back a little something. Show for... them your biddies. Yep, it is. <laughs> it costs money to do these, even though we can't afford to pay everybody for every stream. We have to use the bits and donations, mm -hmm. but... It's just a way to show your appreciation. Even with the inflation, buy them a coffee, you know, get them enough for Starbucks once in a while. Okay, maybe not Starbucks. That shit's expensive. You know. Dunkin'. Dunkin' Donuts. You can get some Dunkin' Donuts, you know. Wah, wah. Yeah, wah, wah. <laughs> I heard Burger King actually has good coffee, which is frightening to me. But <laughs> if you want to support the studio, that's where you pop over to our coffee or subscribe here on Twitch. That goes to the studio to offset the cost. Because I can tell you, uh, the studio, uh, the licenses are for software alone is impressive buy mama and shanky a coffee or two yeah so many damn <laughs> expenses on licensing alone and uh wow i think that covers it so i can let my wife give the schedule yes Holy crap. thank you everyone for joining us for the season's premiere of season nine of windy city craziness i had no idea what we were getting into tonight but it went everywhere <laughs> <laughs> All right. So coming up over the week, we have on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, Season 2, Episode 2 of Demon the Fallen. This is going to be played live, y'all. It's our first live session of the season. Join us, Ivy Raven, myself, and we've got a few. We got Maddox returning and Unconscious Celestial. Then we have added to our cast Timber Brad, who is absent during this stream, and House. Y'all might have seen the season, the, the episode one of season two last week, but I'm gonna tell you, their characters are gonna really kind of shake up the dynamic a bit. It's gonna be good. So join us Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern for that. And then on Saturday, December 24th, I don't believe Tiss is doing a stream, is she? Mm, I think, no, she is. The next one, I th she said she was all going to be off is January 7th. Okay, so if Tiss, if Tiss is streaming, it'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, running Call of Cthulhu 7E, set in Victorian London. It is called London Esoteric Society. A group of investigators are investigating sus cultist stuff going on and summoning elder beings and reading books that should never be read. They should be burned and they are burning through luck and sanity at an alarming rate. Join them at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. And then on Sunday, Christmas Day, we will be back here with episode two of Windy City After Dark. Season 9.
We have some big shit coming this season. All kinds of shit's popping off right from the start. Isabella talking about ghouling people. Jackie finding out Annabelle's agreeing with Cratius? What? Oh, yeah, there's a political motivation with that. Damien, <laughs> she has no idea why Damien's run amok with the Anarchs. Not Nicholas yet. never had a chance to tell her. Ginny met with an old vampire, but a politically savvy one. Mm-hmm. And Roscoe, damn, you and Victor had a talk where he didn't threaten to murder you. That's a first, didn't I it? didn't know he had it in him. Neither one of them knew it if they had a minute. <laughs> and I do thank everyone for coming. Uh, first of all, let me, before we leave, I have to say mental health, everybody. It's not a joke. It's not a laughing matter. Please take your mental health seriously. Check in on those around you, especially in the holiday season. Because the holiday season is rough on a lot of people. Some people just need someone to reach out and say, hey, you're okay. That's all they need. And if you first suffer from mental health issues, it's okay to not be okay. There's nothing wrong with telling people that you need help once in a while. I'll say it. I need help once in a while. Sometimes I have to reach out to those around me because I'm, you know, having trouble coping. It happens. And if you don't feel you have anyone in your life that you can reach out to, in, the list, in chat right now is numbers. You can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that you can get someone to listen and be on the other end of the line that will listen and try to help you out. Because mental health is health, people. And we've lost too many good people in the world to something that, you know, that everyone should take seriously and get treated as much as they can. Just please take care of yourselves. And now I'll turn it over for my wife so she can give her portion as we go and exit this episode. And folks, check in on those people that always seem to be up and happy every time you're around them. Because I'm going to tell you something, that is a very common mask for some very severe depression. I live with it. I have since I was a very little girl. And I have done that mask all my life. Because that's what people respond well to. So check in on those really happy people. The ones who always make you laugh. And I, Mama McStabber, am a registered nurse. It's rough out here for healthcare workers, let me tell you. Um, please, 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 get your vaccines. Nurses are being severely understaffed with COVID positive patients. I mean, ever if you don't know, nurses are generally just abused in the workforce. It just it, it's just a thing. Um, there's a reason why so many nurses burn out because they're being traumatized daily. Um, but yeah, it, it's legit. In nursing homes, nurses are being assigned over sixty patients that are COVID positive. Please get your freaking vaccines. And things that we pretty much eradicated are making a comeback like measles and polio. So please get your vaccines. RSV has babies and small children packing up pediatric wards and pediatric hospitals. Please do it. I'm going to be here in the new year, and I want all of you here in the new year, too. So take care of your mind and your body. And I'm going to tell you, don't be a douche. And fuck Putin. Fuck Putin. Fuck the Irani government. Fuck the Palestinian governments, too, because they're doing some hinky fucking shit. With executions. Fuck all the... If you're a fascist, fuck off. That's yeah, all I gotta just say. Just fuck your fascists at this point. Just If you're a fascist, I don't care. If you're a fascist, just fuck off, please. And I'm sorry, but 
you know, if you're MAGA, then you're a fascist. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to break it to you. Yeah, just please. Um, if you're a fascist, please just fuck off. Yeah. The world's fucked up enough. We don't need fascism on top of all the other exactly. fucked up shit. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, said with love, hope to see you next week. But if not, please enjoy any holiday you are celebrating, whether it is Christmas or, you know, it is Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or anything else, because there's like 20 or 30 different holidays right around this time of year. If it's, you know, Yule that you celebrate, have, be safe, enjoy it, but be safe. And for those that are going to watch our show next Sunday, which is Christmas, Eve, Christmas Day, get up. Spend time with your family. Watch Please. Die Hard. Watch uh, Hans Gruber get thrown off a building. Because it's not Christmas until Hans falls off of Nakatomi Plaza. That's right. And then <laughs> 5 p.m., you're tired of your family already. That, they've been there all day. Yeah. Then you can just turn on Windy City and spend it with us. Yeah. Or, you know, make your family watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I say that, you know, I might have a vested interest in people watch it. I don't know. Thank you so Thank much, you everyone. All. Have a wonderful night, yep. and we love you. Good night, everybody.